I got some friends that kill some people, but my friends have always been killing people. I did not break the law. He kept the body for one to eat two days, and he laid the body on the edge of his tub and, quote, slid open his belly, end quote. He took pictures of him. He defleshed him, acidified the flesh and skull, and kept the skull. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Chillin' and Killin'. How is everybody tonight? Is everybody looking forward to some love? Murder um, and whatever. Okay, so, <laughs> listen, Miss Miss Audio Technical Issue Woman is just going to ask something. Um, every time I try to share our video right now, it's saying that it's ended. Are you? Are you I getting see it? that. No, yeah. I'm being really like I just tried no, four no, different so ways, and it says it ended. It says it's not live. I can't find it live anywhere. So, is anybody watch? Like, can anybody tell me? Well, that that see. Right now. Well, Send let's see. Message. Send us a message. Is it live right now? Rusty, only if you mention oh, where I'm actually not mentioning that one. So that's not on my list tonight. Anybody out there? Is everything good? Is it running yeah. good? Let us know. Yes, that's what he says. I mean, yeah. I don't okay, see that perfect. it's ending. That's great. Okay. So for some reason, literally, whenever I go to the, it's saying it ended. Yeah. I can't share it. Yeah. So. That's what I was having this. Okay, so everybody share it out for us. Let's get it going. <laughs> Show us share it out for us. Yeah. Lovely, lovely holiday that is Valentine's Day. Yay. <laughs> yay. Yay. Uh, yay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Flowers. Welcome to tonight's Hi. show. We are excited to bring you this special show tonight. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> we had to get Kirsten all together. She was having some technical difficulties. So now she's all good, but a little sweaty, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I don't like, I mean, it, 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 like it stresses me out. I feel like I need a little bit of like, I, I, I don't like computers or technology or anything okay and what i really don't like is when i turn on to do a show and they're both silent going no we were going and i'm like, yeah. so I go, like guys hold on i'm gonna test my speaker so heather goes turn it off Gigi goes like this i'm like what, what do you want I'm me to plug in put a banana and poke my computer no, with it? Like, get off and get back in again Put I'll a banana in. in. Get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. It made sense right. to us at the time. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> we're the IT of the show. Like, we were just trying to help. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Uh huh. Well, what are you drinking on tonight? So I am drinking grapefruit rose. Ooh. Okay. Which is nice. my absolute new favorite drink. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. And when I got home today, my husband had bought me three bottles of it. So he he nice. gets he gets the Valentine's Husband of the Year award. Um, Yay. I, I'm not going to be drinking all three bottles tonight. I'm just maybe drink this last, but um, right. yeah, I figured rose was pretty appropriate for Valentine's Day. So it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you drinking on Gigi? <laughs> Uh oh! You know, I call this Val of Mine, and of ooh, course, ooh, I know it's. <laughs> I know what she's drinking. As Can always. I guess? Ooh, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Do your psychicness. <laughs> I think it rhymes with schmodka and oot lunch. <laughs> Very good. I swear, this is my first glass. I swear. <laughs> Vodka and fruit Fun punch. Line. Okay, uh -huh, everybody. Boy. That is Gigi loves vodka and fruit punch. So, guys, yeah. everybody, go out and get that because I guess <laughs> it's a game changer. I had this really cool drink plan for everybody, but life got in the way. I didn't get to get out. So, just my normal red wine. So, there we go, everybody. Yay. Nothing fancy. I'll bring it next time. I, I know I'm slacking on the drink side. So, okay, I'll mix something really cool live. I'll, I'll throw it around like cocktail. I'll, I'll, I won't, but I will. I won't, but I will. <laughs> I won't, I'll do that okay, next. but all right. So can I explain my name real quick? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I didn't even change mine. Oh, so up until, I don't know, about five minutes before I jumped on, it said Mia Moore, Rick and Morty, because I learned all week long that I cannot mm -hmm. learn Spanish. So it took me seven days to learn how to say muerte. So Mia Moore, muerte. 
My How you're going? Death. <laughs> oh, the I, I was came late to that one. I was like, "What? We were talking about the." I got it. <laughs> Wait. So explain, please. So you can't speak. You you figured out you can't speak Spanish or can't. No, learn. no. I knew me more, and then I wanted to learn my love for death. So I was like, "That's what I wanted my name to be on for the show." And I was like, I kept saying they were trying so hard at work. Bless their hearts. And I was. They're like, "You're saying it wrong." I was like. Rick and Morty, me and more Rick and Morty. So it said me and more Rick and Morty up until about a little bit ago. That's the story. I'm I sorry. love Rick and Morty. It was, so I, I it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. They're all saying it right. And I said, that's what I said. <laughs> I have nothing. Yeah. I'm, let me see. Oh, yeah. True crime Valentine. Look at, okay. I don't have glasses on because of this makeup, everybody. So like my vision, you'll see me like, uh, uh, because I'm trying <laughs> to see. So don't mind that. <laughs> don't mind me. Let me just explain that. Oh my goodness we, gracious! I, I'll try to think of a. I'll try to think of a fun name for you. I change it. Like I don't think I can change it right now. Right? It's already like here. It just removes me from stream. Yeah, I'm screwed. So this is just. This is just who I am now, everybody. He's just Heather tonight, guys. That's it. Just. Oh Heather. no, I can edit my name. Okay, let me see. Oh, let me so just so. capitalize that H because that is annoying. Heather, what? What should I call? I don't myself? know. What's a true crime word that rhymes with? Cupid. Uh, let's see. I'll just put Cupid. Did I spell that right? I can't really see. Heather Cupid? Yeah. <laughs> nice. You're Very so nice. original. I love it. I know, Heather right? Cupid. Like, yes. Next time, like our Christmas special, I'm going to be Kirsten Santa or Kirsten Claus. <laughs> that's going to be it. <laughs> I like that. I like Kirsten Claus. I think that's I a like good it name. too, actually. Just like, hmm, I'll write that one down. <sighs> All right, everybody, we're ready to start diving. Do we have anything else to talk about or say until we start diving into these stories? Mine's pretty lengthy, so I'm, you know, I'm ready to get going. I've been. Yeah. Yeah. I, like Let's head, when head. I go down these, these rabbit holes in my stories, because like, I'm not great at keeping notes. So I literally, everybody listen to the story over and over and over and over again until it's like bled into my brain. So I am okay. happy to be. Do this story and be done with it. But I'm gonna let Gigi go first, though. So go ahead. Oh, Gigi, oh, that's a, oh, oh, Lord. She literally okay. just went. What? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I could go first. <laughs> I, I thought that's I, what I mean, we decided. I could go first if you guys want me to. No, I'll go. I, okay, everybody, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> okay. Forget what I said. No, pay no mind to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> 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 bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, everybody. So <laughs> I decided on this Valentine's Day special. Did I say it right? Valentine's Day? Yes, you special. did. Valentine's. Hey, everybody. I'm learning how to speak. Yay. So I wanted to do a killer couple. Okay. That was where I was going with this. So I picked, well, I'm just going to start the story. I'm not even going to say their name. I'm going to start the story and let's just get it going. Get into it. So. Okay. Ready, everybody? You ready for story time? Pull your blankets up and let's get scary because I'm about to tell a story. <laughs> oh so God, let's start I'll with it tonight. Holy shit. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> so let's start with Charlene Williams. Charlene Williams was a young girl. Well, she was about in her 20s, whatever. I'll get to it. But she had she came from a good home. You know, great parents, good parents. She had a great IQ, no like mishaps or anything like that. The worst thing that they could say about Charlene was her parents are maybe like hoarders, which I mean, if that's the worst you got, come on, you know, I'm, I'm a hoarder, but somewhat, somewhat. Okay. So Charlene has a good life. You know, she gets into her teens. She gets a little rebellious, you know, like most teens do. They want to their family's so good and they have these high expectations for people that they decide like, okay, you know what? Maybe I want to, you know, drink a little bit, smoke a little bit, yada, yada, yada. Well, mm -hmm. Charlene, she ends up being married and divorced twice by the time she's 21. So, okay. but we're talking where this is back in the seventies. Okay. So she then meets Gerald. Okay. Gerald, well, her friends set her up on a blind date. They're like, Hey girl, Got this guy, so good looking. I want to set you on blind date. Blind dates, I don't know, everybody. I've been on some, not the best. Anyways, so <laughs> okay. she goes out with Gerald and she's like, 
oh my god this is like the chemistry was just amazing between these two like love at first sight but i don't know charlene was already married twice maybe that's just how charlene gets down but whatever i don't know about charlene business <laughs> just say she really fell for gerald okay so her and Gerald within a week are living together, okay? Living together, yeah. and this is back in like 1977 when they met. Here I was born. Whoop, shout out to me. Anyway, so Charlene and Gerald, after just about, you know, a little bit of time they live together, they're, you know, they get married very early too. So it's just like explosive between them two. So they're together about a year. Sex life's wonderful. Everything's great. Year comes along. Gerald comes up to her and he's like, he's kind of going through some, you know, like erectile dysfunctions going on with Gerald. And he's like, Charlene, you just aren't really doing this for me. You know what I mean? Oh. Like I kind of need a little bit more umph in my life. Well, Charlene's like, well, you know what? Let's have a threesome. Okay. Gerald. No, like, never a good idea like, ever. Well, Who's they, they have the threesome and Gerald's kind of like, all right, Charlene, grow up, been there, done that. I, I'm not really feeling it. You know what I mean? So he sits her down and he's kind of like, uh, aren't <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he sits, he sits Charlene down. He's like, Hey, Charlene, you know, let's talk for a minute. I think to spice up our relationship, we should get sex lives. Charlene's like, most people would be like, fuck, you know, no, get the hell out of here. I'm gone. But not Charlene. Charlene's like, you know what? Wait, I'll try anything <laughs> once. Wait, wait. So hold on. So first okay. he says, let's have a threesome. Then he said, well, says, he said, first he said like, this is it. He, he couldn't perform. He's having erectile dys dysfunction. So he's like, I need to do some Charlene's like threesome. And he's okay, like, okay, but then his response is sex slaves. Did I hear that right? Yeah. So like, he's like, you know, he pitches it to her like Charlie, you know what I mean? Like sex life. Let, let's just, you know, just don't be so lame, Charlene. Let's fucking do it, you know? <laughs> so Charlene, like, oh my okay. God. You know what I mean? Charlene's like, fine, okay. And then, so, oh, gosh. So let's go. I love how you can't tell the story without laughing, like, a lot. <laughs> she, like... It's a crazy story. I'm just thinking, like, seriously, like, I mean, people can pitch a lot of things to you, but, like, where's your limit? You know what I mean? Where do you just, I like... I, I think no. um, I think I think sex slaves would would be my limit. I mean, I that's think right there. That, that's it. Yeah. Wait, and then he's telling her like he's like you know, and and it's got to be younger people because you know like people your age, Charlene, twenty one, too old, <laughs> too old, too old, Charlene. So, so it's like, all right, Gerald, why you didn't leave Gerald now? I, I don't get it. But Charlene's down. Charlene's like, okay, this is the love of my life. Let me let me figure this out. I, we're in love. Me and Gerald are in love. Shut up, everybody. You know? So Charlene and Gerald end up, and what she does is she's basically, they have this creeper van, like the, the what you would call a creeper van. Now, every let me van break out. ever in every murder story in every scary movie ever. Yeah, got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let me go real quick, everybody, and let me start breaking out some of these photos so let me show you guys oh they're so in love these two right oh like, they're hmm. both good looking well <laughs> yeah. so okay so charlene is the she's kind of like she lures the girls in okay so they go to a mall and she gets two girls and we're talking Rhonda and kippy Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna derive from saying people's last names because I'm gonna mess up their last names. So okay. I'm not gonna say people's last names because I suck at it. But uh the Gerald's last name's Gallagher. So you probably want to know who the murderer is. So we'll just say that his last name's the only one I'm gonna say. So Rhonda and Kippy, 17 and 16, Charlene goes up and says, like, hey, you know, I got some I got some weed. Wanna follow me to the car? Mind you, she didn't even have weed, but well, you know, whatever. So she didn't even have it. How? I know, like, what what a, what a be bitch. Lie about what? I know, what a bitch. Like, this, anyways, I'm done listening so, to this. Everybody, get off. Get off. Okay. Yeah, that's so what he said. Not, sorry, I'm gonna go get I'm gonna get serious now, guys. Everybody, we just we've said disclosures a lot of times. Things get graphic here. We make jokes about things, we don't yeah. joke about the victims, yeah. yada yada yada. That's our disclosure. Yeah. Uh, don't complain. <laughs> don't cancel us. Uh, we don't care. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, so, okay. So she ends up, he takes them into this creeper van. So like Charlene walks them back. They're like, Hey, you know, I got this weed. 
And they open the door and freaking he's there and he holds them at gunpoint, right? So they take them and Gerald, Charlene's driving to this location to where mm. he ends up sexually assaulting them. And when he's finished, mind you, like Charlene's not even like, she's not even allowed to participate. Like he does it. It's he, he gets off by this and that's just what it is. She just wants to kind of like make sure that he's happy. So he, after he's done with these girls, he takes them out of the van and he shoots them both in the back of their head. Okay. And then they're gone. Their bodies are end up found two days later. They find them. And well, at this point after this, you know, Gerald, is he has a child. Okay. He's been married like five times. So he has a child and Gerald's child, he was sexually assaulting his child. So the child finally pressed charges, was old enough to press charge charges against him. Okay. And so they ended up fleeing to Reno. Okay. Now a little backstory on him, Gerald, he came from like where she came from a really great home. His his background is described where you would say a child was, you know, came from a back home of our background of abuse where his was considered brutal. So his dad, and this is why I kind of like fell into the story a little bit. Cause it was like fascinating to the point of, hold on everybody. I have to put, I'm going to put my glasses on for a little bit. So oh, okay. she's getting real here. <laughs> I, I have to now I'm getting into it. You know so, what? Wait, can I, not to cut you off. Can I just like throw in a, a question slash comment? So what you described with the van and the weird sex scene and then the shooting of the two girls, that to me doesn't really describe, like, when you said sex slave, that's not well, really what I, okay. No, exactly. So he, he kind of, when he went, he, I mean, Gerald's not, she's got the IQ, not Gerald. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. in the aspect of it, they were wanting to do, like, keep them hostage, yes. sex okay. Slave. That's how he pitched this to her. Like, was that their when intent? When the girls okay. got into the car, it became a whole different situation. He was already assaulting them to the point where he's like, now I got to kill them. You know, there okay. was no keeping them at this point. So okay. it, it just moved to that. So I thought I had a picture of his dad. I thought I uploaded, but I didn't. But his father actually was the first person in their state to be executed by the gas chamber. So he was brought up. When he was young, his father killed a police officer. Well, it was it was like a prison guard. He ended up saying, like, if I if anybody touches me again, the police, I'm going to kill him. Well, he ended up breaking away and taking this police guard with him, and he ends up killing the, the guard. He's executed for this. So this is in Gerald's young life that his father's executed. His mother is like a sex worker, okay? So she is literally bringing in men constantly who are just beating and brutalizing Gerald. So Gerald came from this really abusive you know, home. Okay. Which, yeah. you know, not all people that are abused turned out to be abusers, but usually right. people that are abusers are always abused. You know what I mean? That's kind of how that seems to work out. Yeah. So, okay. So now let's skip back. So Gerald and them, they skip town, they go to Reno. Okay. So they're in Reno and even her parents, cause they're, they want to get married. Okay. And her parents, you know, this is, mind you, she comes from a good home. She ends up convincing them that, you know, Gerald's this good guy. He's just going through some stuff. So they help him get a passport, change his name. Like her parents help him with all that. So now he goes by a different name now Why they're in Reno. So, okay. So time, I mean, not much time goes by before they go to a fair. Okay. And at this fair is where they abduct Brenda and Sandra. So we're looking at a 14 year old and a 13 year old. Same MO, you know, Charlene goes in and courses the girls in and he gets these two this time though. And he, they don't even like wait to get to the location. He just starts sexually brutalizing them. And he takes, seems to be two at a, you know, two girls at a time as like, yeah. you watch what you're about to get, you know, like that power dominance that he's having over his victims, you know, like so much mm -hmm. terrified, you know, he's terrifying the girls. Okay. So he brutalizes them. They get to their, their location. He takes the one girl out, uh, bludgeons her to death, and then comes back. And the other girl's waiting. So he comes back. You know, how how torturous is that? That your friend is gone. He comes back, bleed, you know, blood all over him, like, your turn. You know what I mean? And he takes her out and bludgeons her to death. Their bodies are not found for 20 years later, these two. Wait, so now, this where's is, the girlfriend in all this? Like, is she watching she's the second one? She's driving the car. Like she, where? Uh, okay. He drives the van around where he does everything he wants to do. So she's, okay. you know, and this is how he gets off. You know what I mean? Like he's drive. She just drives around. She drove around in this in this instance for about two hours while he brutalized these. But girls. is this fueling? I 
hope and slash don't think you'll have an answer to this, but is this like fueling their sex life on their own now? Like, I mean, you would, you would think you, she doesn't say, cause you know, she well, we'll get more into like, okay. All, right. all of that. But like, she doesn't say like, he, he comes out later and says like, dude, she was a, a full participant, which you, to me, you would have to be to put up with that. Cause like the first, the first bit she could have said, okay, I thought he was going to, as awful as it is, keep these girls as sex slaves. It was some kink. I did not think he was going to murder. Her. Right. You right, get out, right, you yeah. get out, you can, if the guy's got to go to work or something. Sometimes you can run if you were really wanting to get away. You know what I right, mean? Yeah. But she's luring these, these girls in. she's without her, this wouldn't have actually been able to happen on this level because them girls wouldn't have felt safe enough to go with this dude. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. So she's a very willing participant in my eyes. Okay. So they end up murdering these two girls now. And, you know, you can see it, it's spiking up to be a little bit more brutal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like he's going from just shooting them in the back of the head to now he's bludgeoning them to death. So now we get to, you know, the 1980. Okay. So we're going from 77. They meet. I mean, this isn't a three year span that him and her are hooking up to he's, he's brutalizing all these women in such a short period of time. So, and, and she's, I love him. Like he's a great, a great guy. You know what I mean? But so, okay. Did anything, did anything say how they were having, like, how do they have money during this time? Are they robbing things or did it say, oh. like, did they just save up? Like, how do they have money to go on this whole? Did it, I don't know. I mean, I did. Well, you know, Sh Charlene's family was well off. So that could have been possibly what was fueling okay. them. He yeah. actually worked odd jobs. Like he worked at a bar trucker. Like he's a felon. Like he, he's a felon. He's got multiple charges against him. So he's not, he doesn't have like some fancy job and their van. They just have like this, this van, you know what I mean? Okay. So they're in their own own area and they're just going to like fairs in mean, places like malls and fairs i mean it's it's very isolated you know it's <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it, it's not like people they know so a lot of times That's me i'm like how are they buying gas away. how are they eating like you know i'm like oh what are they like go ahead how are they affording eggs like do you forget the, the fact that they are killing people how are they eating bread i don't understand it like all, all right sorry <laughs> that's fine so then they end up, once again, they do another abduction. We're April 24th, 1980. They abduct Stacy and Karen, both 17. Same kind of MO, but this time, it once again, bludgeoned. They, he bludgeons these two. And then we go to, and I'm going to kind of go a little fast. But uh, <clears throat> next, so we got April. So April goes to June. So he's he's going really fast in between these now. So April, June, they pick up a hitchhiker. Linda, Teresa, and I forget her, her last name's like Algler. Like I said, I'm stuck at pr pronouncing last names. So they pick yeah. up this hitchhiker who is pregnant and he sexually assaults her and bludgeons her to death as well. So now we go to July 17th, 1980, and he abducts, um, she's just, you know, a bartender. She's finishing her shift, staying outside. They abduct the bartender and they murder her. So she gets murdered. Her skeleton remains are found bound with fishing, fishing wire when they find her. And there was cord wrapped around her neck. So they were able to determine that strangulation was the cause of that death. So, okay. So they're, they're just carrying on. And finally it comes to, we're going to November 1st, November 1st, 1980. They go to what is like a Sadie Hawkins type of dance or a sorority type of dance that they were doing for a college. Oh, now we so get to run into. Thanks, I mean, the Thanksgiving, the Valentine's Day stories. I'm like, now we get to the Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, you have Craig Miller now. Craig Miller and Mary Elizabeth so Sawyer. So they saw so like you guys will see you pronounce it. <laughs> okay. So we have okay. them. Okay, and yeah, I remember these two. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see if I, if I don't cover it. But um, so Mary Beth or uh, yeah, Mary Elizabeth, what they called her Mary Beth and Craig Miller. So they're they're at a dance. They're walking out and they get approached by them and basically abducted. OK, they're sitting in a car waiting. And actually, Craig's friend comes out and gets into the car and he's like, 
hey guys, I'm driving you guys. Cause they're in the back and he's kind of just messed around. And Craig says, get out of the car, dude, just get out of the car. And he's like, why, what's going on? He's like, just get out of the car. So Mary, uh, so um, Charlene comes up and she's screaming in the guy's face, get out of here, get out of here. Well, the guy's like, what's going on? He actually takes down the license plate number at this point. He's like, okay, this seems weird. What's going on with my friends? He is smart enough to take down the license plate number. Okay, so now they take Craig, poor Craig, and right away, they don't want Craig. You know what I mean? So they yeah. take him, they kick him out of the car, and they shoot him to death, okay? And they just leave him on the side of the road. So they end up finding Craig dead, right, you know, pretty poor fast. Craig. But they have, she's missing, okay? So now we have her out here missing, and, you know, very pretty girl. And so sad, but so she's missing, they're actually, he's keeping her. Like, this is his sex slave part he's, he's utilizing her for. He's not long, but he keeps her for a period of, of short period of time. And when he's done with Mer with her, he ends up taking her out to an area, you know, and he has her lay down, just lay down flat on her back and shoots her right in the head. And Charlene was talking about, you know, like, oh, he was at it all night with her. She just, he wouldn't even let her come to bed. She had to stay out on the couch and yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, a little strange. But, so, now the police have this car. They have a missing person. They have this guy saying that this car was, or the car's registered to them. They can go right up to the house. So, at this point, Charlene's pregnant. Okay, so Charlene's with baby, and she's kind of nervous about everything, and they're they're talking to her, and she's like, yeah, I don't know, da 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 da. In the police office, she's like, well, I need you guys to, I need you to come down for a statement. Okay, we'll be there. Well, of course, you know they're not going to show up. You know what I mean? So they didn't, they didn't yeah. show up, and then all of a sudden, you know, now you're prime suspects. So wanted photo goes out of them, and now everybody's on the look for them. Okay, and and you can see there are ten years difference between these two. So, okay, they both get picked up. Okay, they're arrested and brought into custody. Okay, and they're charged with, you know, the murder of Craig and Mary Beth. Okay, because they end up finding Mary Beth. They find Mary Beth and it's it's just, it's very sad. It's, so, but they're being charged with. So now, now she's, first she goes in there and she's basically staying by her man. She's not talking. Okay, she's really quiet, but they let her sit and stew it in a cell for a little bit. Well, now what happens? She's going to flip. You know what I mean? And she's like, okay, wait a second. Attorney comes. What if yeah. we let her tell you everything and you drop, you know, you, you lower her sentence. So yeah. it's kind of like making a deal with the devil in, in a way. So she was like, they said, okay, you know what? We're going to make you this deal because we just want to know what is going on with these, with everything else, you know? So they, they make this deal with her and, you know, she is going to start talking. OK, and she is going to talk a lot to where she starts taking them to all the locations where all of these victims were at. Oh OK, God. so she starts she starts finding these people for them. The only ones she couldn't find because were Brenda, Brenda and, and Sandra, because she couldn't remember. So that was why they were found 20 years later. So now you have like, OK, this woman you love and he's saying, well, what are you talking about? She knew everything that was going on. So now they have to go and she's, yeah. she's singing like a canary mm -hmm. and now they're in court together. Look at, look at and look how pregnant she is. And I just always think like at this moment, I associate it with this. Like, I feel like that's how she's looking at it right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh Lord. You know? Like, I just feel like, like, that's that moment where it's like, yeah, hi. You know what I mean? Cause just like, look at the, like, there's nothing between these two. Like, oh boy, she's just like selling them down the river. Mm -hmm. So he ends up getting death sentences. Okay. He's sentenced to death. Oh, of course. And, and then, you know, she, <laughs> she gets the, a light ass sentence. Like she gets 17 years and ends up only doing like 15 and she's released. She's alive right now, everybody. She is out there. She's been out free for about 35 years now. Change your name, living her best life. Um, I read, well, I actually watched her do an interview where she was like, basically like, you know, he, he just, it was, I was so scared to leave. And, you know, she made a, st sorry, everybody. I just feel like bullshit. You know what I mean? And she well, made a baby. Comment. She had the baby. She did have the baby. So she has the baby, her and the baby. She had the baby while she was in jail. And okay. then now, you know, the baby is, you know, she, she 
everybody's changed their name. So when you try to find them, of course, yeah. you're going to. But she released a statement and she said, there were, there were victims who died and there were victims who lived. It's taken me a hell of a long time to realize that I'm the one, one of the ones who lived. Uh, uh, uh. Like, shut up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. And then he <laughs> wah, gets a life wah. Uh -uh. So he gets a life. I mean, to me, she got away with murder. You know what I mean? She should be sitting yeah. with him. But he yeah. ends up getting his life sentence. He dies at 56 of cancer, though. So he doesn't even make it to any kind of death sentence. But it's it's his it's ironic that his father got a death sentence. He gets a death sentence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's how that story kind of ends. And you know, there's multiple books that have been wrote on this. Like these are just a few. You know, all his father sent like. This is really like interesting because they're going to go on the backstory of his dad. And do you yeah. think that makes someone tick? And here's some other books. But yeah, like I was saying, like the sex slave part, like I don't really think that was it. It was more like just abuse and murder. You know what I mean? But yeah, basically, with kidnapping, rape, doing. and murder. That's pretty much what it was. Correct. So, and Rusty, if you got a little tidbit that I didn't cover, toss it yeah. in there. T type, type, type away. T -t -t toss it in. <laughs> to to toss it in but yeah i just feel like you know the story is you know it's it's one of those things where you see a lot of these stories because i was picking out stories for this case and i want to do like the killer couple uh thing and every time the girl flips on the dude and let's see there's also the storyline criminal hmm. minds it was criminal minds okay but you know i've never seen that show like you know what I want to throw in there is like, love that show. I don't pretend to be a normal person by any means. I always, no. I like all jokes aside, I think many times a day, like I may have sociopathic tendencies. Like we think that, right. But right. The minute you started this story and you said, okay, they're having sex life problems, this and that. And his suggestion was, and I, this is where I'm putting her on the block and going, <laughs> she's totally at fault. If I don't care how much in love with somebody I am or whatever, if someone's suggestion to me is let's kidnap sex slaves, forget the rape and the murder. If someone says to me, let's kidnap sex slaves, I'm immediately going to go, um, hold on. Like, what is the movie mom. you watched last week? Like, you know, like, <laughs> what? Hold on. Well, that and they were what? children. What? Yeah. yeah it's like, not. And they have to be underage, Charlene. Like, what the fuck? Idiot. Like, it takes <laughs> something, something on her part to go, okay. Like, great. Yeah. You know, like, her I moral mean, compass she, was like, obviously off to that. Well, she, she, with her previous husband, husbands, she would do a lot of like uh, threesomes and weird sexual things with them. So when she, that's why she pitched the, well, threesomes. You know what I mean? And then, like, he said, like, okay, I did it, but this sucks. And she's thinking, well, I guess that didn't work with my other husbands. Sure, let's try sex slaves. I mean, not... I mean, the fact that your husband now is telling you, like, look, girl, you just don't do it for me. I need younger I other girls. Run! Yeah, that's <laughs> right where I would be like, no, sorry. Dude, there's so many red flags that it's like, there's not even, like, a, a warehouse to hold that many red flags. Like, how many no, do you need? So... But that's them, and she's still living. She's 66 years old, Charlene, and I feel like she just got away with murder. I don't buy her being a victim one freaking no. bit. No. You know what I mean? I think no. that's all bullshit, but, I mean, that's how I feel. People can tell me in the comments, what do you think? Do you think she was a victim? Um, um, I think but that, that now, um, I think for the next week, every episode of my road rage when I'm yelling at somebody is going to be Charlene instead of Karen. I'll be like, you know what, Charlene? What the fuck, <laughs> Charlene? You know? You're go, so guilty. <laughs> no one believes ah. you, Charlene. Oh, you're too good for a turn signal, Charlene. Charlene. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna do that for now. Whenever I get mad at someone, I'm going to say that. Like, yeah, Charlene. You got, you have to. <laughs> Everyone yeah. else has to do that, too. Everybody. Yeah, I wish we could find her name and just like correct. Like, You'll win a free prize now. if you send in videos of you yelling at Charlene on the road. Yes. If anybody does that, if you take a video and send us to us yelling at Charlene on the road, at work, anytime you're angry, you send will win me. a prize. Yeah. Yes. Send we, it to me. We, prize, prize, prize. I love that it. That is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's something else. And I feel bad for her kids. And I, feel bad for his daughter who, you know, he was sexually molesting her for a good period of her life. You know what I mean? So that's like messed up, Nash. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. 
I agree. I agree. And, and that's, mm -hmm. and, and you see that, like I said, like, and everybody out there that thinks like you're in love, just know you do a crime, someone's going to fold on the other person. So yep. don't think that love is going to save it all because it's Valentine's Day, but just know that's just one day. When it's over, it's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's over. cheers to Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Next on the docket. Who's next? All right. I'll, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> you want to? Cheers. You guys rock, paper, We're scissors? running out of time. We, we, we got well, you know minutes. what? I was going to say, if you want, I'll go next because mine's rather quick. So I can actually blow okay. through it. Oh, I took a lot of time. My story was long. <laughs> no, it's okay. Like I said, I listen, these two are always making fun of me how I write like 45 pages. So <laughs> I kept it very quick and simple tonight. Um, but yeah, look how detailed okay. I was. What? I said, look how detailed I was. You guys. Yeah, you were me? awesome. It was amazing. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, mine's a quick little story and then you can finish it off if you're good with that. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So I have named my little short story, Mr. Results. And you'll know why mm. in a moment. So my Valentine's Day story is about love gone bad by a hitman. Okay. So, <laughs> Ooh. Um, do, do, so do, do. the thing, the thing that I love about the story, I don't know why I love it. Don't dig too deep into it. Is that this just happened? Like it's not that long ago. Cause a lot of the stories we tell, I feel like people were a lot more creative criminally in like the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, like that's yeah. just my opinion. Okay. So this was <laughs> Valentine's day, 2010. Okay. Mm, so, okay. Not that long ago. Chew on that one for a minute. So we are in Snellville, Georgia, and we have a lovely, beautiful married couple named Richard and Stacy Sheck. So I'm just going to, like you, Heather, I'm just going to say Richard and Stacy and not keep repeating yes. the last name, but Richard and Stacy Sheck. Um, and this Valentine's Day is actually the couple's third wedding anniversary. And I want to top your story by saying that this was Stacy's <laughs> fifth marriage. Okay. Oh, yep. Stacy's got number five. On. Okay. Um, so, yep, getting them off the internet. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, to everybody's opinion, this is a great marriage. They're happy. Things are going well. Um, Richard is really excited to celebrate Valentine's Day with Stacy. So they have a plan to meet in a park to exchange gifts and cards and chocolates and, and whatnot. Um, so Stacy is working in a medical facility at this point and tells her husband that she's going to meet him there at this park. And basically says that the nurse that is supposed to relieve her at work is late. So she's going to meet him directly at the park versus, you know, meeting him at home first or meeting him somewhere. Um, so she's going to meet him right at the park to exchange gifts for Valentine's day. So Stacy never shows up. Instead, what happens is Richard is met at the park by a guy named Reginald Coleman. So I have pictures of um, Stacy and Richard. I also have a picture of Reginald just for your reference. Um, okay, let me go to. So, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, why don't you what, put up Stacy and Richard first if you if you have it handy? Yep. So there they are, Richard and Stacy, third wedding anniversary. Happy as oh, uh, his beard matches his hair. Her hair. Yes. <laughs> Happy as two little duckies in a pond, or we thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of meeting Stacy, so Richard is met by a man named Reginald Coleman, who is a personal trainer and part-time hitman, who oh, goes well, by well. the name, who goes by the name Mister Results. I love, by the way, that he's a part-time hitman that has a nickname. Um, well, who could do that full time? I mean, it's exhausting. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I wonder um, how, how many is like considered to be part time. I was gonna say that. Like, dude, does he lose benefits? Like, is it like only three hits a week is part time? Or I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> is it unionized? Like, what's happening? <laughs> he gets no details. sick days, guys. Obviously, no, um, no paid right, holidays. <laughs> so Coleman unfortunately guns Richard down, killing him. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy arrives at the park surprised to find her husband dead, <gasps> gunned down, bleeding. Um, so basically, at this point, she waits for her five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy, which she does mm -hmm. not get uh, because eventually she's found out. So 
here's the backstory for you. Um, Stacy's working as an office administrator at uh, Georgia Spine and Neurosurgery Center. And Richard is her fifth husband. Um, like I said, happy, loving marriage. Everybody seems to think that they get along perfectly. So Richard even has legally adopted Stacy's three children. So everything's going Thank great. Um, yay. Hi, Melise. Okay. So, um, this is, so I've already told you about the murder. So this is where things start to get a little fishy. So as she's planning this, there's an IT technician working at Stacy's job, um, who mentions to police that she noticed that Stacy's inbox at work had been emptied clean, um, in the weeks leading up to, and the day of the murder, it had been emptied out totally, which this is a business. So if anything, not that she thought, okay, this is a killer, but she thought this is really, really suspect yeah i don't i don't clear out my yeah. emails um so police basically obtain the backups for this um for the email and realize that stacy has transferred a lot of money um to a medical assistant co-worker named lintrina ross so i have a picture also um of oh linitra i'm sorry i think i was saying that wrong linitra ross um so <laughs> she wants my necklace. Do you see it? The the little, it's like a skeleton is choking me. It's part of my love beyond death, Valentine's Day, morbid death, gothic death, love, whole thing, you know? All right. That was, that was so much freaking passion. I love it. I know. That's like the <laughs> most, that's the most energy I've had all night. So, all right. <laughs> so anyway, um, so they find out that she's transferred a lot of money to this coworker that she has. All right. So then they find phone records that tie Stacy to this coworker and her boyfriend. And the boyfriend is uh, the one and the only hitman, Reginald. Um, so then they part find time. Mr. Results part time. Yeah, Mr. Results. Part -time, so yeah. then they find Stacy's car um, at Lenitra's house. So basically the three are arrested at this point because they find everything in the world that ties these three people together and a lot of money being transferred. So um so they arrest all three of them at this point. So at this point, like you like to say, Heather, Stacy starts singing like a canary. Okay. <laughs> She's the first one to start talking. Um, so there she is smiling, you know, in her mugs. I love that. That's right. Mean, that's a big, that big smile. Because it I'm really like, this is. is amazing. So there, here's where the whole story comes out. So Stacy tells the cops that she believes she's under the impression that her husband has been uh, sexually molesting her sons. Okay. And she had also told this story to Lenitra. So she said to the cops, I told Lenitra, I don't want the police. I don't want a divorce. If this man is sexually assaulting my sons, I want him dead. That's it. She said right out to her friend. I want, I want him dead. Nothing Do it else. yourself. So then this is at this point when Lenitra basically offers to her friend, Stacy, my boyfriend will kill Richard. He'll kill He's part time though. You got to catch him on a Wednesday. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he delivers flowers every other Saturday. So yeah. you got to get him. You know, Saturdays are out, Sundays he's at church. <laughs> you yeah. Do Wednesdays. So okay. um, they arrange the meeting and Stacy basically agrees at this point to pay Reginald for the murder. Um, she also, it's important to say she wanted this murder to look like a robbery. So she actually ended up getting really angry when Reginald failed to take Richard's things from the park. Like she wanted it, you know, messed up. She wanted things stolen and he didn't do this. He pretty much gunned him down and left. And she's mad about this because she says, I want it to look like a robbery. Um, she also only wanted him shot once in the head because she said, I don't want my husband to suffer. So only once in the head, please. That's my Valentine's Day gift. Um, so she's, she's she, sweet. She's sweet. She's awesome, isn't she? She's amazing. I, I want her as a babysitter one day. You know, right. much love for her. Love. <laughs> so, um, in the end, basically, all three of them are convicted. It turns out later on, this is awesome. Stacy's son, who had been kind of feeding her stories about getting abused, tells Stacy. I'm um, really sorry for exaggerating things and blowing them out of proportion. He never sexually abused me or anything like that. Oh, um, shut the yeah. front door. So that's the second wah-wah for the night. Um, so she pleads guilty to malicious so, so murder. Her son, her son did come and tell her, like, right. hey, I've been sexually... 
Yeah, he kind of I implied it. Like, from what I read, he didn't say, like, this is happening, but he kind of was, yeah, feeding her some stories. Um, so she pleads guilty in December of 2012 to malicious murder and is sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Um, she basically made a deal with police. They took the death penalty off the table if she would talk, which she did. Um, and for her testimony against her friend, Lenitra, she had to do that in order to not get the death penalty. So um, she remains incarcerated at Pulaski State Prison in Hawkinsville, Georgia. And did the kid, did the kid talk about this at the trial? Did he admit that he didn't? Was that at the trial? Um, so I, from what I read, he talked about it at the trial and admitted it to his mom. So okay. just basically not copying to too much, but just saying I might have exaggerated, you know, embellished a little bit. Um, so during questioning, Stacy does admit to having an affair with a man named Juan Reyes. And the affair, had, the affair um, at this point, apparently it had been going on for many years but he's cleared almost immediately. Like there's no involvement at all. They don't think this right. has anything to do with the affair. Um, but um, he's ruled out as a su suspect and she's still in prison. So that's my whole entire story. I ripped through that pretty quick. Um, but It's, it's crazy because yeah. if you think, I mean, I guess I would just, I'd go to the cops, but like in a rage, if you think someone's touching yeah. your kid, who knows how you would react? You know what I mean? But I don't know. Well, I like to think I'd be like, look, I understand you know, I'm not a mother, but I understand how that must be, how you would want to react. But I still would like to think that I would not turn first choice to I'm going to have somebody kill him. I, I, I mean, would probably do it myself. Truthfully, I'm a crazy person. So I feel like I don't know. You know what I mean? After like, my scary situation yesterday, I thought I would handle things a lot different. And being put in that just for even yeah. five minutes of that thought. I was yeah. not myself. I can look back and be like, holy yeah. shit, I did not handle that how I thought I would. Now I yeah. do know that if something like that does happen. I'm going to need you guys to come stop me because I will be an episode on. Yeah, that's that's a you know snapped what? episode for sure. Because I would even <laughs> I'm not be able to say that I'm like, man, a hitman. I'm not even saying I don't understand her thought process. I think what I'm saying, because you have to understand everything I do, I kind of go in my mafia mindset. I think I would want the proof. I would want proof. Like I literally would take the time, just like every good mafia man, to say, "I want to see the wire. I want to find the wire. I want the proof." Once yeah, I but when you're, wire, if your kid comes to you and their your kids like, you know, talking to you, you're gonna you're you're gonna want you go into mother mode and you're gonna do anything you can to protect your child. You know what I mean? So like. I don't think I would ever be like, well, I don't believe you or, or where's the proof? Like, I don't need in that aspect proof. You know what I mean? Not, I think not I would. the initial. I think I would. And I only say that because. But how I'm would you, how little... would you even get proof on something like that? You I, know what I, I, don't, I mean? I don't know, but I know what a little shit liar I was as a kid. And I know <laughs> the kids. I try to be fair. Like, I don't know. I guess you know your like, kid. Well, you know what? I don't know what age this start that this started at, but I also know it's true scientifically when people say like their minds aren't developed the right no. way. That's why they tell lies or embellish on things. And that's why they, so I, I would just like to think before I had somebody murdered, I would at least try to, I, I don't know. Murder. I, murder. No. All right, fine. You know what? I'm done. I'm done. Right to murder. Murder. Goodness. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I'm glad I'm you're very rational, though. I'm very, are you thinking a rational yes. way? Where I'm like, Murray! so we have to call her. <laughs> listen, come into listen, that situation. Yes. You know what? You know her. what? You know what? You know what? Thank you, what? Rusty. Thank you, Rusty. Yeah. Thank you. There's ways. You know. I mean, I want to say maybe I would set some cameras up. I would never let it get to the point where he would even step foot in that room. But I would have. I would try at least to be like before I murder somebody to get some kind of proof. But I'm not a mom, so I bow down to the mother's like mother. i said you, you know your kid you know what i yeah. mean like if, you, if, you, if your kid's a kid that lies all the well, time she didn't know her kid it. apparently i mean apparently you know what i mean and that that's the messed up thing about it because like yeah i kind of feel for her in a way even though like that's no, me bad too. Shit. I do too. Yeah, but it's me like too. I'm, I'm thinking in her mind she probably thought what she was doing was the right thing right. to do and then it's like right when you when you have this little son of a bitch say i lied out. you're gonna be like looking at the big picture and being like, okay, I need to do take a couple days and figure it out. At least that, right. At least that. At, at, yes. Okay. Or you go to the police and let the police figure it out. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, because the final note I'll leave you on is child molesters and rapists get killed way worse in prison, way (laughs) worse. And that is the lovely note that I will leave you on. So, um, (laughs) your, your turn. Um, I might Wait. go over <laughs> a little bit. Well, this is a special. It's a Valentine's it Day special. special. Yeah. Specials are usually it's okay. longer. Go ahead. Problem solved. Okay. So we are <clears throat> going to the case of Dr. John Baxter Hamilton and Susan Hamilton. This is Dan. Okay. So let's take a trip back to February 14, 2001. <laughs> what well, would have been 15 years for Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton? What I call Love Day instead of Valentine's Day wasn't <laughs> that so much. <laughs> Melise, do you know someone who was murdered or have you murdered somebody? Say it now. Then come on down to Chill and Kill it and let's <laughs> say it now. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, go ahead. According to family, friends, and such, and co workers, they were in love as all these stories always start out. But as we all know, behind mm-hmm. closed doors, things are different. Um, I already showed you the picture of them. So, uh, Mr. Hamilton was Susan's second husband. Her first husband was always concerned for her safety because she ran, uh, John's, uh, abortion clinic. She was like the head, whatever they are for that. He was also a gynecologist. So he ran two different things. So as we know, with all the controversy, that is a dangerous place to work. So her ex-husband is... Mm -hmm caught on interviews saying how he was always worried about her because of that. Um, So I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit because I just found this fascinating. So I let's listen to the 911 call. Ooh. Ooh, Gigi. Big guns. (laughs) To when the, well, when he called, it was between, he had (laughs) surgery. Well, he had, because he, also did surgery being a gynecologist. So between two surgeries, he went home. Okay. So so this is the doctor is called this is yes. the nine one call. Okay, go yes. ahead. Please, please, send please, please send an ambulance, please. Well, my wife, my wife, my wife, I think my wife is, is dead. Sir. Please, sir. Please send, I've been trying CPR. Please send somebody. Okay. Quick. She's not breathing. No, she's not breathing. I don't get pulse. Please. Okay. Hurry. You're doing CPR on it? Yes, I'm trying. Yeah, I'm going to hang up so I can continue. Right. Please. We'll be right there. Okay. He's a doctor. He can't administer CPR. I mean, you got to call 911, but like, go ahead. <laughs> and what 911 operator lets you off the phone before somebody gets there? Well, I guess if they're just going to hang up anyways. Yeah, usually they're like, stay on the phone. Yeah, yeah usually they're like, stay on the phone. Yeah. yeah, even if you set it down, right? So, but like, listen to how fast he's talking. Yeah. Like, if you came home and your wife was brutally murdered, how they say, like, she was. And we'll get into that because I just, the more <laughs> I got delving in, I was like, oh my God. So, yeah, I heard right. liar, liar, pants on fire, too. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, so like, I know if I came home and I saw my husband like that, like, you wouldn't be able to understand any of my words, first of all. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. They're going to rehearse, you right? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Sure. Oh, my God. So, I was, okay. I was. Yeah. 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 So, let's go back to about 7 a.m. that morning. He had surgery scheduled at 7 a.m. He was also a gynecologist, which hence the surgery type thing. Okay. He went to do surgery, left for home in between. <laughs> he he took her flowers, by the way. I love how um, she giggles. We're just so <laughs> We love her like, hmm. <laughs> I'll do the same. <laughs> That's why we're on here together. So he so took her was, flowers was, after he... He went home in between. <laughs> <laughs> so he did this surgery, went home. Brought her flowers. You know, it's Valentine's Day. Brought her flowers. Okay. So, um, after the fact that I wrote my notes, I did further research. So, apparently, he, like, called and pushed back a surgery. Okay. So, he obviously had this planned, whatever, pushed back a surgery, but had it, had the hospital page him uh, at 8.30. You need to be back. So, he's setting up all of his shit. Yes. Okay. Yes. So he got a page to go back to the hospital to do another surgery. He was scheduled to do at 9.30. This this page came in before that. So he did bring flowers home for her for Valentine's Day. Like I just said. 
There was also an exchange of Valentine's Day cards. This is fun. So, the one Susie Love gave from John... Alabama. Hi, Trey! Uh, the one that was found in his suit jacket oh. is right here, okay? okay. Oh, so, isn't he I'm gonna try, it says, I brought this card two weeks ago, so I guess maybe that doesn't seem appropriate now, but I do love you and have a good day. So, also, the other, there was more written on this card because, hold on, I got to get, like, my, my sketch notes here. So, she put on it, I bought this before last Monday. So, she came across some some fun things. Sorry, and, I was reading the card. Oh, so it was, yeah, it was messy. Anyway, so, so apparently there was a patient of his that turned into a lover. She's, he claimed no, obviously. So phone calls and stalky things got him busted a week stalky before the murder. Things. Stalky things. Yes. Stalky things will get you caught up. Like calls of like 60 times a day. She pulled his phone records. So okay. I don't call my don't gynecologist call 60 times a day. Uh, no. No. So, you know, clearly there's a motive. Okay. So after Something Stephen, fishy's going on. <laughs> yeah. So after receiving the 911 call, <laughs> cops arrived to find Susan dead. She was strangled by two neckties and blunt force trauma to the head. And there was no sexual assault. So they were at, originally thinking maybe a robbery with the sexual assault and, you know, things just went bad. But I'm listening to the freaking 911 call. Come on. But when they started to question John, he got all sorts of odd. You can actually look up the interrogation. I didn't grab the clips of that. But he, like, gets all weird when they leave him in the room. Like, starts, like, I love when they leave people in the room. And you just watch them act like just animals. Yeah. In a yeah. yeah, I was just going to say like an animal. Stirring. He literally looked like an animal. Yeah. So... They started putting two and two together and looked at all the evidence presented. Investigators questioned the, right. the blood marks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the marks left at the scene and the blood marks on you his get shirt. It, Melissa. So, <laughs> I do have. <laughs> Here is. Oh. Oh. Hey, you're welcome. Hey. So wait here a minute. Hold they... on. You said. Wait, Gigi. You said she was strangled with two neckties. Yes, and blood force trauma to the head. Oh, okay, it blood never did. Okay. They never found the murder weapon because they said the blunt force trauma is what actually killed her. Okay. Yeah, I think so. That's a lot of blood. So, and then, so they start questioning because he, like, goes back into surgery and stuff and has got, like, um, here we go, the blood stain. Oh, starts. cheese and rice. Like, what? <laughs> like, like, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Clean up in that. <laughs> so the defense tried Nothing saying, to see here, folks. <laughs> yeah, I, why wouldn't anybody question that at the freaking hospital? And then he well, got I mean, up in here, up, up in here in his his um the sleeve. So they said he was about to operate on me. I would have a lot of questions. I'd be like, I don't. Yeah, know I'm so this. confused. Like, I'm not. I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, he had yeah. a matter of not. So very he just long walked in back into his next surgery like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, because he called. He was scheduled for surgery, <laughs> so if he called nine one one, they're gonna come get you know do their business. So defense tried saying the police ignored other evidence and jumped to the conclusion he was guilty and was arrested five hours after it all went down. Prosecutor said Hamilton changed clothes after killing his wife in the master bathroom. They claim the defendant took the house, his body, his bloody clothes, and the blood instrument used to beat the victim after she was strangled with a man's neck necktie and her face repeatedly smashed into the tile floor. That was her face that made all that blood. Two do you months know, wait, I don't know if this says anything bad about me, but do you know I was going to say that? Like, all jokes aside, when you said they never found the weapon, I was going to say, I wonder if he like wrapped the neckties around the head and then used it as like for and just went, oh, like yeah used i didn't think like about that yeah the head i was literally give him leverage head, like flick yeah mm. okay sorry <laughs> 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 okay go ahead so, so two months before her death they, 
<laughs> so. They fought over the, de the defendant giving his son money without Susan knowing about it. Susan Hamilton suspected her husband was having an affair with a patient and stripper whose telephone number turned up 60 times on the, on the what I just said. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to say her name because I can't pronounce it because okay. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <Come, come laughs> I don't either. <laughs> I, it took me seven days to figure out how to say my name there. Uh, a topless dancer for eight years testified and performed table dances for this doctor. So she got that, I guess. Uh, the primary prosecutorial evidence was a blood stain on John's shirt. So we'll go back to that for a second. So believed to be the Jeez. shape of the injury over Susan's eye. So like her head would have had to come back up into his chest. Oh, the prosecution believed this Almost injury. looks like a heart with an arrow on the one side. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> the prosecution wow. believed hey. this injury was also the shape of the instrument used to cause the blunt force trauma. The defense called blood splatter expert Tom Bevel to refute this theory. He performed an independent analysis on, of the shirt and confirmed the blood imprint on the shirt could have been the result of the doctor's account of trying to save his wife. So there you you get the other end of it where... I'm giving her CPR. She's dying. Oh, blah, 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 blah. After seeing this, how, how can anybody just say, I I, I just can't go over the 911 call, I, I think is my thing, how he just reacted to that. I have a question. So like, he was arrested called... not five hours after the 911 call? Yes. When they started like piecing, you know, because they have to investigate his account because he is the one that called. Five yeah, hours was pretty like, freaking fast. Uh, yeah. yeah, like and that's so what I they're saying. All this difference. happened like really fast, but did did you happen to read anywhere where, like, they all have a story? So what's his story of what happened when between the time he went home, gave his wife flowers and a car, whatever, went back to work? Did he ever say like what? happen like somebody must have broken in or i mean what yeah yeah that that's what they wanted what i say that's what he was like said on the 901 call you know he he walked okay. in and he saw his wife like this blah 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 i just got home from work i had flowers in my hand for her and blah 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 no you son of a bitch she gave you the valentine card that you have in your freaking pocket like come on like i it's so sad well i mean and they obviously didn't believe him. In only five hours, he, no. he's arrested. So obviously, and it wasn't good planning everything that he no, was No, I was going to say, this is horrible. Know? This is like, so not, what was, the, what oh, was yeah. his reasoning? What? Why did he want her dead? Yeah. I, I never did figure that part out. I'm assuming she probably wanted divorce after finding this stuff out. Um, right. So he didn't want to lose all his, his, his gynecology right. money. Because the gal she, that he was... A, uh, supposedly had the affair with, she said he cut everything off with her because he did not want to lose his wife. He didn't want and to lose his wife. She got up on stand. Yeah, exactly. But I don't understand I, that. I never understand when people say this. Like, it's like with my story. She, li I don't even think I threw this in there. My woman literally told the police and her friend, oh, I'm really, really worried if we go the route of divorce, I could lose custody of my children. Guess what, you dumb hoe? If you kill somebody and you go to prison, you're not going to have custody of your children or ever see them again. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? So he goes, oh, I don't want to lose my wife. So he kills her? I don't understand why people do that. Like, you know what? I worked hard for this business. I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to murder somebody. Well, guess what? You're not going to operate your lawn mowing business while you're in prison. Like, I don't understand it. It pisses me off. I think Sorry. people under I think people get too much into watching TV that they feel like they can get away with something and it's like yeah. okay watch the right TV show like forensic well, files. A lot of this <laughs> you get away is, with shit. It's <laughs> emotional driven. Sometimes we don't think right. Coming back to the parent thing, you yeah. literally get out of your freaking mind. You have yeah. no idea. That like, was emotional. Just you're right. It's emotional. your guy is just selfishness. You know what I mean? I like just, he's premeditating that. He sat down with, you know, Potatoes, oh, he her knew. eating dinner, thinking I'm like, I'm gonna kill her. I'm gonna kill uh -huh. her. She's gonna, gonna make it shit. look like a. And, and yeah, which kind of funny like is the fact and... that 
he's so shitty at it that he gets he's like literally that just takes him like enough time to tape down the place and they're arresting him like that's how quick that shit is like they get so the like, call they come out there they they lay the tape and they're taking him in like you're so he shitty. had some of the evidence <laughs> like her blood and stuff was found in his car so on his freaking shirt on his shirt i was just gonna say could we come up he for the just... show can we come up with a like dumbass but gangsta award he wins the dumbass but yet technically so gangster award for wearing a bloody shirt that he just killed his wife right to work and being like oh i'm just gonna go operate on a vajay now and then be like here's my shirt like who <laughs> i think he's more just that? like a dumbass like we need sounds I'm gonna get we in my do, I gotta find my sound effect too. Cause yeah. like we need like the thank you, yeah. Cause I don't know. I think he's wow. dumb and oblivious. Like how? Yes. Well, see his. But some doctors attorneys, think they're God. They think they're untouchable. Yeah. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, they have the God complex. Now his defense attorneys had a complex, heyday yeah. with this. Had a hate because it was only five hours. They're like they just jumped the gun. They just da 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 da. Are 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 you kidding? Me? What case is this that we're talking the name about? Of the doctor, name of the name. The, What's the name well, of that? you just had to ask me after finishing my drink, huh? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Dr. John Baxter Hamilton and Susan Hamilton, and it's uh, okay. Oklahoma. So Oklahoma. Oklahoma. and then wore the murder shirt back to do more surgeries in his gynecologist. <laughs> shirt. I love that. And we all think something was fishy from the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. Gynecologist. On the, the cross examination. <laughs> wait. Okay, so we left off at uh, the Tom Bevel, and he was supposed to refute the allegation, and he said, "Well, it could have been from her saving or him saving her." Saving, right? And, yeah, yeah. So on cross examination, Bevel was asked to uh, the prosecution miss any pertinent to which anything pertinent to which Bevel replied, "Yes." The courtroom was silent. Bevel went on to describe blood splatter inside the sleeve of Hamilton's shirt was consistent with the defendant using an instrument to beat his wife. So jury convicted him of first degree murder. Um, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and currently remains incarcerated at the Dick Connor Correctional Center <laughs> in <Right>. Harmony, Oklahoma. <gasps> Long winded. <laughs> yes. So everybody, is love fun? Did we learn anything tonight that yeah, love, do we love, love, do we love, love, like, does it love, love? Is everybody excited for Valentine's Day? Like, I learned not, learn not to accept a Valentine's Day card. Yeah, Look at really. Your date tonight and think, hmm, mm -hmm. is it love or is it murder? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! We put out, like, the so public many... service, the public service announcement we could put out is: people, if you are cheating on your loved one, you're probably going to get murdered. <laughs> if you find out they're cheating on you, you're probably going to murder them. Um, if anything, Amen. you know, it, like it's just let's put out a public service announcement: don't choose the route of murder, people. We should Love totally do murder. that, actually. Like during the Did week, you guys see the, the case, week, that thing like I posted seconds. earlier this week, that news story about the lady who ended up getting like 30, she got in trouble because she embezzled, well, she ended up stealing like $30,000 worth of like gift cards and shit to give to her online boyfriend. Did you see that? That was in, of course, Michigan. But yeah, she ended up stealing $30,000 to give to her over a period of time to give to her online boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't love grand, everybody? I mean, love is wonderful. What, what says I love you more than somebody saying, You got some money for me? <laughs> I just don't even like understand that. Like, the so wrong people, love can make you dating, completely stupid. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But end, like, there I has to be a time frame where you're just like, mm, Come on, man. Either. I love it. I feel like, wait, can I just say, I wish. Yes, I love that. To end the show, I wish we had the clip. Of Adam Sandler from The Wedding Singer singing "Love Stinks," you know, like, I love all drunk on stage. Like, Dang it! I, you should have told I me. Wish, yeah. I wish we could end I our love special. That. So, everybody, YouTube, please, Adam Sandler singing <laughs> "Love Stinks." Um, and so yeah, this was a fun show. What's what's our next show? Oh, Gigi, knock out what our next show is. I don't think this we have a. Do we have a topic? We do. We do. 
We yeah. do. And Kirsten, oh. me and you, we, everybody, we need a theme. We need a theme. Like, yeah, you know, we, like to dress Nails, up. we always pick a theme at the end of every show for the next show. So what's our next topic? It's Dennis Nelson. Uh, so that is the Dennis he Nelson. He is okay. the UK's version of Jeffrey Dahmer. Ooh. What? So how can we theme this? I mean, anybody have it? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't even KFC. have to be that theme. You guys, you guys can just that. pick something you want us to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, can I wear my Dahmer right? glasses again? Guys, I have my Dahmer glasses right here. Can I wear them again? Wait, they're crooked. Wait, there you go. <laughs> what should we dress as? What should we theme? How do we do this one? Dahmer let's glasses. See. Okay. Let's see. Oh, she put on hers too. Oh my God, okay. Dahmer. Um, all right, let's think. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, <laughs> do we dress like British people? What does that even look like? I, 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 British. I, Maybe we could do like a British theme. I don't know what that means. Do we dress in like a Beatles shirt? He said the Brit that ate too much. Wait, what's a really British meal? Like a really British. What, are we going to eat dinner? Like, let's <laughs> all cook a recipe. Let's all, you know, we're going to cook was, and eat. Like, no. We're I, was bringing, so like, I was bringing. I was going gonna to get KFC shit, like, because it goes British into shit. the story. What is it? KFC. Can we all dress like Austin Powers? I, that's what I was thinking. Austin Powers. Huh? Oh, Austin Powers. Let's Austin do some Powers. Austin Powers. So what's that like? We okay. have to get leisure suits. Plaid. Oh, plaid. So she said plaid. Austin. Plaid. Yeah. Let's do mutton. Austin Powers. I'm not Powers. eating mutton. I'm not eating. Okay. I'm sorry. Can I have a tea and crumpets? Fish yeah. and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> okay. So we're going to okay. go and do a whole British thing. See, this is why it's going to be apparently like a cooking episode from Hell's Kitchen. Like we're going to have fish and chips and be talking about a cannibal. You guys don't want to watch <laughs> and be, this. This is, is shit. It. This is shit. This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a disgrace. I'm gonna yell at myself because like we're, we're too far across. away from each other to be yelling at you guys. <laughs> All right, oh maybe we should do a giveaway. I'm feeling like doing a giveaway. I'm Let's feeling like we should too. And wait, can we just it's announce the date really quick? So, guys, that's in two weeks from today on the 23rd. Is it the 24th? Oh, 23rd. Yeah, it's the tw it's February 23rd. We're gonna do Dennis Nielsen, which is okay. you said the UK version of Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, okay. We've already. Wait, hold on a second. Wait a minute. I just want to ask this really quick. Have we actually done a Dahmer, or did we just touch on the the series? Did we do a Dahmer episode? No, we just. We I just, think we we just touched touch on the series. On, no, we just. Yeah, we on. touch on. Okay, well that'll be down the road. But anyway, we're gonna do. We'll do this version in two weeks. Okay. So. Sounds okay. good. And we're gonna get a little British for everybody. Does that that sound British? Is that British we, accent? I, I don't know. You just sound constipated. I don't. I mean, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rats and Brats boys! We're so excited. It's we were so excited. Cheese. Yeah, lots of new viewers tonight. This is awesome. Thank you so much, yeah, Rhonda. We do we appreciate, appreciate that. Everybody in the comments. Come back in two weeks. Tunes in. Come back. We we're gonna be British in two weeks. We will watch yeah. our page. Share our page, everybody. Get it out there so we can start building up our actual Facebook page because we have our Chilling and Killing Crimecast group, which we were not having success when it came to running the podcast through that group. So right, we have now made right. an official Facebook page. But we need everybody to share that. Get it out there so we can start yeah. building up that page a little bit more. So if you guys can share send invites to people that you think would like this show mm -hmm. please do we appreciate you very much and we're going to do a giveaway on next week or yeah two weeks, two from, weeks from today giveaway and so just so you know the way we usually do the giveaways is we ask something from the show if you've listened to the whole episode we usually <laughs> ask at the end a, a very key question of something that we announced or said during the show and whoever answers first wins so get you want to make sure you're watching yeah. Wait, wait, stop. Oh my god, now she sounds like a leprechaun. <laughs> that that's a couple weeks from now, show. <laughs> oh damn it. Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in and make sure you watch your partner next to you because you never know. Yeah. Love is crazy, open. everybody. You never know. We don't yep. want to get you uh caught up in some love bullshit. So everybody you know have a Valentine's Day, not this. Yeah. Either way, they'll back. Chip, chip, you know? <laughs> Here's right, everybody have a good card, honey. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh -oh. Good night. Uh -oh. Happy Valentine's Day. And this was a great show. 
Yes. We are out of here, you guys. Stay chilling and chilling. Bye.